Hi, let's talk about the abdominal aorta and its branches. So here we're looking at the abdominal aorta and very many of its branches. Uh, we can see the lateral borders of the abdominal aorta here, transitioning down at about L4 into the common iliac arteries. The abdominal aorta is a retroperitoneal structure that's found left lateral to the inferior vena cava, which we can see there. Um, there are several anteriorly facing important uh, trunks for viscera. There's the celiac trunk. There is the superior mesenteric artery. And down here is the inferior mesenteric artery. We can also see some of the lateral uh, branches of the uh, abdominal aorta. So for instance, uh, here is the inferior phrenic artery. You can see it giving off the superior suprarenal arteries. There's the middle suprarenal artery. Uh, coming more distally off the abdominal aorta, we can see there's the renal artery. And the renal artery gives rise to the inferior suprarenal arteries. Um, here's an accessory renal artery. And then we have gonadal arteries. There's one gonadal artery, and then there's the other gonadal artery. And oftentimes, uh, folks will be more specific with the gonadal artery. Um, for instance, if it supplies a, a testis with blood, they may call it the testicular artery. If it supplies an ovary with blood, it may be called the ovarian artery, or you may continue to call it the gonadal artery. Let's take a look at uh, some of the vessels supplying the duodenum and the head of the pancreas with blood. Um, so we can start here, that's the celiac trunk, and coming off of the celiac trunk along this way, we have the common hepatic artery. And that common hepatic artery, as you may recall, has two terminal branches. There's the hepatic artery proper, and then the gastroduodenal artery. It's that gastroduodenal artery that's going to be important for us here. Um, and we can see coming off of that gastroduodenal artery right here, is a branch and it's quite a mouthful. It's called the anterior superior pancreatico duodenal artery. There's also a posterior superior pancreatico duodenal artery uh, that we'll see on the next slide. Uh, and before we go there, I'd like to point out here is the superior mesenteric artery or the SMA. You can see it um, <clears throat> running just posterior to what would be the, the neck of the pancreas there. The, uh, the SMV is tucked away, so we, we can't see it there. But coming off of the SMA is a branch called the inferior pancreatico-duodenal artery. So here's the inferior. And it is going to give rise to an anterior branch and a posterior branch. And we can see a little bit of that posterior branch there. The anterior branch is going to anastomose with the anterior superior pancreaticoduodenal artery. That posterior branch is also going to anastomose with the posterior superior pancreaticoduodenal artery. And let's take a look at that now. So what you're looking at is the posterior aspect of the duodenum and the head of the pancreas. We can see along here, that's the 
abdominal um, aorta. Um, and let me just point out to you, here's the inferior vena cava. And we can see there's the left renal artery heading out that way. So that, that's inferior vena cava. Here's the left renal vein. Sorry, I think I said artery. My apologies there. Um, there is the superior mesenteric artery. So that's the SMA. And what you're seeing here is kind of a, a rendition of what would be called the uh, the coker maneuver. The coker maneuver is when um, the peritoneum is incised and the duodenum and head of the pancreas are reflected towards the midline. Now this is going to give a surgeon access to the retroperitoneum, access to the IVC and aorta, and access to um, elements of the duodenum and pancreas as well. What uh, this Coker maneuver has allowed us to do is to visualize all of those anastomoses on the posterior aspect of the head of the pancreas and duodenum. So here we can see that inferior pancreatic duodenal artery. So there's the inferior pancreatic duodenal artery, inferior PDA. And then that would be the anterior branch, which is now occluded by the head of the pancreas. And here's the posterior branch, which we can see coming up and lovely little branches heading off of it. Coming over here, here is that gastroduodenal artery. It's a little, oops, a little torturous. Um, and then there's the anterior superior pancreatic duodenal artery. So that's the ant soup PDA. And we know that that's heading over there to the anterior branch of the inferior pancreatic duodenal artery. And here is that posterior, isn't this lovely? Posterior superior pancreatic duodenal artery. And we can see that there is an open anastomosis there with the posterior branch of the inferior pancreatic duodenal artery. So this is just, this is perfect. Um, the pancreas is more than just the, uh, the head and the neck, however, and the remainder of the blood flow to the pancreas is going to come from another branch of the celiac trunk, which I'm just circling there, called the splenic artery. So let's highlight the splenic artery. This is a massive, torturous artery heading out to supply the spleen, the stomach, and of course the pancreas with blood. Let's take a look at, uh, at some of the branches supplying the pancreas here. So one of the first major branches here is called the dorsal pancreatic artery. And that dorsal pancreatic artery, as it continues, is going to become the inferior pancreatic artery. That inferior pancreatic artery may run the length of the body of the pancreas and head out toward the tail. So there is the dorsal pancreatic artery. The next branch is the greater pancreatic artery. The greater pancreatic artery here you see is dividing into two branches. And it may, and it does here, anastomose with the inferior pancreatic artery. And then finally, there, there's also um, an artery to the tail of the pancreas. And this is coming down and even anastomosing with that inferior uh, pancreatic artery. And that inferior pancreatic artery um, can sometimes anastomose with what's going on with the head of the, uh, the pancreas and duodenum. 
And the body can also be supplied by, we can see here's the SMA there, uh, jejunal arteries that, uh, that can be in the vicinity there. So we've discussed the, uh, the blood supply of the pancreas and the duodenum. And we can, uh, we can see how there are opportunities for anastomoses between the, uh, the branches of the celiac trunk which supplies the foregut, and the superior mesenteric artery, which supplies the midgut. And as the transition from fore to midgut occurs at the major duodenal papilla, we can understand why branches of both the celiac and SMA are going to be supplying these structures. Thank you very much for your time.